Welcome everyone to the Micro Sector and the Auto One Community Series. I am Sean Ghostmother. What a fantastic Thursday evening it is. Hope all our viewers are fantastically well on this gorgeous evening here in the box. Uh, the box is COVID free, of course. Uh, so hope everyone is well and hope you're doing well. Big welcome to all our guys uh, that are viewing today. So we've got Deep Flow, we've got Tank Master, Morgan Davey, Chris, we've got SLM Motorsport as well. Uh, joining me is one of our special guests. We are waiting, I think, for two. Um, they're running late, um, we'll, so we'll rip into them later. Um, so joining me, though, is the one and only Scooter McGovern. Hello, sir. G'day. Are you well? Are you excited for the micro sector or ready for the hard questions? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what to expect, but it should be good nonetheless. <laughs> so it is a special Anzac edition of the micro sector. Uh, so we're just going to go through, well, really three rounds due to not being on last week. And what have been really three action-packed uh, rounds of racing. Or rounds, I should say, nights, actually, of racing. Oh, hello, Claude. How are you, mate? Very well, thank you. You are quite quiet. Are you on the... Um, yes. You're on the... A bit too quiet, am I? Yeah, a little too quiet. Give me two seconds before I fix that up for you. You can go on, I'll fix it. Go on, Sean, and I'll fix it. One second. Yep, I'm just trying to do something here. <clears throat> okay, so the scream is skipping again, so I thought I'd fix it. Obviously, I didn't. Uh, leave that with me. Um, so, uh, also joining us in the box, I believe he's just arrived on a flight from Air New Zealand, is the one and only. He is the original champ. It is Wardo. Hello, Wardo. Evening, mate. How are we? I'm very well. How are you? Are you well? I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Wardo. How are you? Mate? Good. I'm well. So, we have... Good. We have extended the broadband cables and the phone lines across the ditch uh, to our fantastic New Zealand brothers in arms and friends and neighbours, except on the cricket pitch, then we hate their guts. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, just, I was just waiting for a new to start talking. Well, I was just waiting for Wardo to tell us about all cricket. about New Zealand internet. Mm. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I'm surprised that we're able to connect to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, New Zealand internet, yeah, true. That's one thing they do have over Australia. One of the very, very few things. But anyway, we will move on very quickly. So coming up uh, tonight, so we're going to have, uh, as I said, debrief on the last three races. We're also going to have a bit of a chat uh, to our two guests as well. We're probably going to go through a couple of things. And we do have a very special top five this evening. It was our top five sporting moments. Now, I'm telling you right now, this was incredibly difficult to do um, and quite emotional, actually. So... Um, did get a little, <laughs> did cut some onions there, watching sort of some past clips and things like that. Uh, so you can see on the screen there, there are our points tables at the moment. So it is DB007 leading the way from a VLX GTR um, and coming in third is Hijacker. So we'll probably kick off, I reckon, might speak to Wardo actually in regards to why he wasn't around last round. Have you had a good holiday there, Wardo? <laughs> Uh, I'm feeling like I'm doing quite well, actually. I yeah. um, haven't been on the PlayStation for about three weeks. So what do you so expect? It's been, break. <laughs> it's been a good break. Um, I have to say thanks to Mo for the break, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Shout wow. Out, <laughs> wow. <laughs> they are in the same team as well. Talk about <laughs> under no, the bus. Well, it is what it is, but it's been, it's been all good. But mm. Good to get back out there, have a good, good race next week or this week. Now, are you feeling for this week? Preparation going well? Well, actually, um, I've been quite busy, so I've only sort of been on once, but um, I'm relying on Mo quite heavily. He's been doing a bit. Mm. Well, of course, he isn't, you are in New Zealand, so shout out to New Zealand because they actually can go outside. Mm -hmm. But look, it's been so cold here, mate. It's been, um, I just went to the super, super and it's hailing the whole time. I and the weekend is minus five. Yeah. Uh, and in my little dungeon, I don't really don't have much heating down here, so it's quite a challenge to come down into the room and get get some practice in, let's say. But uh, it's all good. We'll be right. 
Sunday. Uh, and he- admin might have to put in for a little portable of heater for Wardo, by the sounds of it. We'll start a GoFundMe page. Wardo's yeah, heater. Can't afford a little heater. We'll get you warm, mate. Don't worry. Are we tough over here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even touching that. You probably not got yet. a foot spa in your lounge. <laughs> <laughs> a massaging chair. Let's not go too. <laughs> how and how would you describe your season, Air Scooter? Pretty happy with it so far. Oh, um, to be honest, not particularly. I mean, first round was well, a disaster. I mean, I was peeing nowhere, and then it all just went wrong. And then obviously, at least well, round two at Bathurst, I mean, I mean, group beast, but I, you know, podium, at least it was a decent comeback, I suppose. But just got to keep working and keep trying to find a bit more pace, just be a bit more competitive. I'm not quite where I want to be at the moment, but I'll get there. Yep. Well, you've come through the ranks, good, haven't you? You, not long ago in community. Yeah. And then the one make championship, I think you dominated, is that right? Uh... I don't know about dominated, but I did relatively well. I mean, and oh. now you find yourself <laughs> competing in that upper echelon, and um, it becomes challenging. Nobody knows that more than the guy here with us today, Water, who was our um, inaugural champion, um, and has seen just the transformation and the speed of the field just come roaring through, but. What it allows is for all of us to find competitive racing at our own levels. Whether that's, do you think uh, B is the one for you, or is it up in A, the ultimate um, goal? Yeah, but I'd like to get. I'd, well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Scooter Water. Oh, sorry, yeah. mate. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I started the A, so I'd like to get back there. But I know that obviously after the first round, it's going to take a bit of effort to do so. But I'm. I hope I'll be there not too long, but obviously just got to keep getting solid results and hope it all goes well. Go well, that's right. I mean, I think what we've found as well, especially in Group A, I, I don't know about you guys, but especially the last race, that was some of the, um, i trying to find the right word here, um, interesting driving that I've seen in Group A, which we don't expect. We did have another big one, so it has been a few seasons since we've had a big one, and this one Wardo wasn't involved in. <laughs> which was quite surprising. So the fallout from that was uh, there have been a few penalties handed out. Um, so VLX, I believe, copped a penalty, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Claude, I'm sure, will be able to fix, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And oh, I, believe, I believe you're correct. Yeah, and I believe um, Diswood got one as well. Got one as well. What you're starting to see at that right up the top end, up the front of A, and, and even B is the price you pay for battling the car in front too much. Um, DB got away with that race just because the cars behind seemed so interested in, rather than working together to get close to him, just compete against each other um, to a level that was, you know, obviously beyond what's acceptable, um, but to their own detriment. Uh, So, Claude... Yes. Do you think it's reasonably possible at any stage for any of the two guys in A, or any two guys, to work together? No. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, teammates <laughs> should, but then you look at, you know, the boys down at Ragged Edge. No, yeah, Ragged Edge. And although they were better this race, I thought they worked well this time, but, you know, obviously race before was the opposite. But um, I think it's a smarter way to to race, um, you know, figure out if the guy in front is quick enough to follow and bring you back into a race, why not? It's just that white line fever, I'm getting that, you know, once yeah, you're in there, absolutely. You, just can't, you just can't help yourself. Well, I, I, um, I hate <laughs> using personal experience as an example, but way down in the bottom of BBMW, we had a top four that just barely changed position, but kept themselves in with a chance, top five, with a chance of winning by not risking it all early or mid-race and still close battling, but never overstepping the mark. Mm. And as a result, it remained a close race to the end. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, um, well. Unfortunately, I finished yeah. at the back of that pack and finished fifth, <laughs> way, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, even flipping over to the BMW side of things, I mean, Deflo is just dominating at the moment. He, he was a class above De- the good doctor. I won that one. <laughs> <laughs> of course, big welcome to the two-time Bathurst champ, the good dot. That's what he'd be known as now. Uh, so D-Flow is dominating with Cruz in there in second. Uh, Mr. Brent, okay, Gargamel in third. Janwell, who, uh, for mine, Janwell's probably been the most improved uh, in fourth. And the bad doctor there in fifth. I think what I found, we found with BMW very clearly in Group A is there are two red-hot favourites and the rest are playing catch-up. Um, D Flow and Cruisen are definitely a class above at the moment. Um, but the Brent, Jacob, Marcus, they're all there, thereabouts. Uh, down sort of group B wise. So we've got interesting race on Sunday. We've actually got a couple of guys on the bubble. Uh, so old white hips and Womble, and I believe Claude is on the bubble as well. That's exciting, Claude. There you go. Used to me. <laughs> hey, hey, Sean, sorry to interrupt. Have you got some like other person join yeah, the chat? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just seen that. I just muted them though. They so they won't be able to talk on stream. People, random oh. people, just join in my chat. I am popular. Up to we're discussing the, the, the B race, I suppose, because we're covering two, two rounds essentially. Yeah, we are. So, it's sort of also, you know, covering that off as well. I mean, the teams championship, I think, is very interesting in both uh, categories. Um, Buffer can't hear whoever's talking. Well, you can hear me, and I'm sure you can hear Scooter. And yep, I'm still here. Yep, there we go. And we can hear Wardo. I'm sure Claude's been obviously playing with his new fancy PC and he's yeah. unplugged some things. And so the team's championship, we'll start with our GT there. Really interesting. Oh, Wardo's left. Oh, oh bye Wardo. Um, really interesting with the team's championship there as well. Switchblade leading the way. Um, now that, I believe is current, but that will change, of course, with um, round, uh, get it right, Group B coming up on Sunday. Um, so that will definitely change. Red Miss in second, Force Performance in third in those pink GTRs, which seem to just dominate everything at the moment. Uh, Counter Punch in fourth, and fifth is Ragged Edge Racing. Um, really interesting, I feel, the Teams Championship. My pick's up there. Uh, so I did pick FPR for the team championship at the start of the season um, with Mr. VLX GTR and that young kid Mountain Go. Boy, what a debut that was! Hey, hey where's Blacklight, mate? Didn't, didn't hear their name, did I? Oh, last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good to know. Good to know. Move on, cuz. <laughs> 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 I just thought I'd tell you, you know, well, you are, so there you go. Um, of course, yeah, you know, Blacklight have had a drive and miss around, you know. Um, credit to Good Doctor Filthy and Mo for not missing around, but Wardo did, so that's why they are in 14th. <laughs> well, I've been quite, quite badly punished internally for my behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on to the BMW side of things, Dynamite Racing leading the way, Lucky's Lawn Care in second, Blacklight in third, fourth is Cornerstone, and fifth is Team Nitro. Really interesting championship, this one. Um, Dynamite, of course, with Cruisin' and who's their other driver? Um, well, they'll actually have a new driver. So, oh, Claus left the party. So, we might speak about the elephant in the room before we move on. I reckon we knock this off pretty quickly. Uh, we have had a few movements uh, in the past week. Uh, so we have bid farewell to, now I'm going to miss a couple here, I can feel it. Uh, Betty has left us uh, due to personal reasons. Um, who else? There's a couple, oh, I should not. Uh, D, the big one actually I want to give a shout out to is D. Um, D, unfortunately, is going through a real rough patch at the moment. So uh, my heart and 
my high fives go out to him. I was his teammate last season, and he was a fantastic teammate. Uh, really great guy as well. Met him last year at Sandown. We had a couple of cheeky froth dogs, and um, yeah, it was a pretty good day. Um, he's a ripper bloke, so all the best to him, D. He will be hanging around, though, so uh, if you do get a chance, just uh, give him a shout-out and give him a high five and uh, wish him all the best. So he's moved on as well. Um, what else? There was a couple others I can't remember. Oh, I know. Lockwood lost his wheel. I know there. Lockwood did lose his wheel, but he kept. he's still driving. He's on the DS4, so he's moved into Shainsky territory. So that's funny, actually. Yeah, he's so not. He's those... not the only one. He's not... <laughs> <laughs> How do you find the DS4? Do you like it? You're a fan? Uh, it's... I'm not explicitly saying I'm a fan, but I'm just used to it. I don't, it's, the main difficulty is just your tyres just go off so quickly. It's, yeah. it's so frustrating. But hopefully I should have a solution to that pretty soon. Ooh. Is that just because you're turning sharp all, all the time with the with the it's, I think controller? Because the, yeah, I, th- I suppose I, th- I theorise that because the game has to account for me pushing a stick around as equating to like, moving a wheel. The, the scrubbing, like it probably allocates more steering lock than I need, and it's hard to really do anything about that. So you kind of just hear tire skills at every corner, but you just have to accept it and watch as the, the little bars, the front wheels just drop so quickly. But yeah, well, yeah. Wondering if everybody out there can hear me now. Oh, there he is. Hmm. Just uh, you were right. I did chuck change some things around with the BC. <laughs> 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 Uh, anyway, um, yeah, if they can hear me, if anybody can hear me, can you please let us know? That'd be great. So that's <laughs> probably scary for the rest of the field, though, that if Scooter's that quick on a DS4, once he gets a wheel, watch out. Um, holy moly. Mm. So planning to get a wheel? Yeah. I've missed all that, sorry, but you're planning to get a wheel? Um, not so much planning, and so I'm looking at the box sitting on my floor right now. Okay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so he's got the wheel, it's just uh, plugging it in. I've got a few things to sort out, but hopefully it'll be up and running pretty soon. That's pretty exciting, definitely. So I do apologise for the lack of stuff on screen, guys. Um, I thought I got to the bottom of that video issue, but clearly I haven't. Um, oh boy, that's going to really do my head in for the next week or so. But anyway, we move on very quickly. Um, so... I want to actually, while we've sort of got two sort of pretty experienced drivers and pretty quick guys, I want to bring something up and sort of, it's a controversial subject, but I'm going to bring it up anyway, because that's what I do. (laughs) Um, The standard of driving lately. Thoughts? Mixed bag. (laughs) No one wants to touch it. Everyone's like, (laughs) ah. I, I've only raced half a race so far, um, and that was punctuated with the mother of all incidents that I've ever had in this game. So, and you've been in some rippers too. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was, yeah. So, um, mm. so I can't really comment apart from what I've been involved in. But yeah, um, I... there's been a few incidents, I guess. Mm. I'm just a believer that this is the sort of game where you're constantly testing the limit and you're trying to and we've spoken about this in admin before and I've expressed my thoughts on it in admin before you're trying to find the line, you're trying to find the absolute limit that you can push to before you go too far Um, most of the sort of experience heads that have been racing with uh, Sector 1 for a while uh, know where that line is quite clearly others are still trying to find it and I think you know while there's uh, penalties given and hopefully direction and, and instruction adhered and listened to and, and acted upon so that it doesn't keep repeating itself. I expected to see some of this to happen with uh, a lot of the newer drivers coming through because they're, they're trying to figure out where that limit is still, you know, how hard to push. And invariably you get to a point where you just push too too hard. And it's you're right, it's produced a mixed bag of driving. There's been some great moments, some unforgettable moments so far this season, but there's also been some unforgettable moments for the wrong reasons too. Um, but nothing that can't be, you know, turned around in the space of one race, you know? So we move on to the next round and that could be an absolute ripper and, and, and all the negative side of it could be forgotten in the space of a week. Oh, that's we're actually, my thoughts. 
got a question from Scotty, uh, Scotty G, one of our viewers um, and one of our racers. He'd like to know, do you think the increase in talent on the grid, people are trying a little harder? Well, that's that's what I'm getting at, mm, pushing yeah. to that line and beyond mm. uh, of, of one's ability too. I mean, that's the reality of it is, is you've got to race. There's no point mm, Wardo trying to keep up with me, for example. He's got to make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. He, he, he can't maintain my pace. <laughs> no, but, you know, obviously, we're talking in reverse here. There's no point me trying to you know, drive at Wardo speed. I'm just not mm. capable of it. And if I try to, that's where it goes wrong. So not only are you racing your field, you're racing yourself. And you've got to what, race within your own capabilities. Um, and it takes a little bit of maturity to do that too. Um, we all know what it feels like to you know, exceed one's expectation, which is good too, but there's too much on the line. There's other people's races here. People have been practicing for, you know, two solid weeks before these races. And I think that that effort needs to be respected and you do your utmost to make sure that you don't negatively influence other people's races with, you know, with uh, uh, rash driving. Yeah, rash I mean, it, happens, decisions. It, it happens in all motorsport, right? Like real life, there's still crashes. It's just the differences online. There's there's no fear of um, of death basically. Mm. So I just I just think people just have no fear at all. Well, that's, that's what, what I, 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 I see, you know. brought up with Prusky when he was here, who drives cars for real, in real life, and you know trying to establish that point. You're not worried about the bill fixing your car afterwards and the no. pain of having to recover from two broken legs. So <laughs> it's a lot easier to sort of send it and and risk yeah. everything, but. You know, if it's about simulation or trying to sort of simulate what they're doing out on a racetrack on PC, you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. Totally Sean, agree. Sean, you brought it up. What are your thoughts? Um, I think it's a combination of all above. I think also the thing we've got to remember as well is at the end of the day, there are a bunch of blokes sitting around trying to have fun. Mm. So I look at it like this. You know, I'm pretty experienced in the old racing caper and. If I'm going to finish in fourth or fifth, but the fifth is the safest option and I can have a great conversation with the bloke in fourth after the race and we can say that was a great race, I'll do that. If I see a gap, yeah, of course I'm going to go for it. But mm -hmm. I'm also weighing up, okay, is the gap worth it? What is the yeah, long-term reward? What is the long-term gain? I think a lot of times what I've seen, and you know, we're all guilty of it, we, we think too narrow-mindedly. Yeah. And we're not thinking, okay, we're five minutes into a race, into an hour-long race. Wait, uh, sorry, I was something just <laughs> caught my mind there. Um, yeah, we're in a half an hour, an hour-long race. Let's think about it. Let's go, okay, I might, might not pass him here, actually. I might just, you know, sit back because my time will come later yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah. race. Um, well, that's a... One of the ideas behind establishing teams, too, was to try to sort of give us all a sense of that responsibility to a greater good as well. You know, mm. a, a bad mistake in a race, zero points, doesn't just affect your own championship, it's affecting the team championship too, you know. And, um, you know, thinking in terms of team rather than individual, I think, can often help tame uh, what you're doing on track for some of us, maybe. So, so maybe not. Oh, look, that has a... Um, tech, yes, we are going to race. We race after the micro sector because it is a special Anzac edition and these young Kiwis, uh, it's a bit late for them later in the evening. It's so they have to go to bed. 30, nearly 10 o'clock there. Yeah. So it's well past. Uh, it's well past. Scooter, <laughs> you, you, you seem, Scooter, you seem to have found that line as to how hard to push and not exceed it. Is it something you found hard to do or... Um. or? Not particularly. I've always like tried to be considerate towards like other one, anyone else on the track, but I suppose it's always difficult because of that line. You know, everyone's going to place it somewhere different from what they believe. Like mm. some people think a certain pass off. So people think, oh no, I won't go for that, but others will think, oh no, I am going to go for that because I want to get past this person or whatever. It's just, you know, it's always going to be difficult to, to ascertain as to what's acceptable and what isn't. But also, you know, a, as long as, I, as, long as you, I'm sorry, that's all right. You 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 go. I see. As long as, as long as everyone like has the mentality that they want to race clean and race fair, then mm. it's really a huge problem. 
I think also when you sort of get right up into that upper echelon, the margins for error become so fine too. You know, when you're talking about, the say, the five top guys, the five quickest guys, they're pushing that edge consistently so hard that it takes a lot less for it to really go wrong too. And I think that was probably an example in that race this week as well. Um, you know, the, the, the margins for error are, are, are so small. But anyway, we move on. We do. I just thought it was, it's an interesting topic. Absolutely. So I think sort of moving on from that, uh, I might uh, throw, the mi- throw the mic around and ask some questions and uh, might go to Scooter first. So how long have you been sim racing for there, Mr. McGavin? Um, I've, been, I've played this game since launch, but not taking it to this sort of level only since about a year and a half ago, like joining leagues and stuff. And then because it used to just be like, Sport mode and daily races, I and mean, then you only know, um, tolerate so much of that before you just get mad at getting rammed off every day. So, <laughs> thought, no, I'll try, try to look something a bit more serious, a bit more enjoyable with a group of people that can be trusted, and that's kind of how I just got involved. Yeah. Um, it's just been, it's been great, to be honest. Yeah. A lot uh, more longevity in the game. Yeah, def- I couldn't agree with that more. That's a, that's a perfect answer. 10 out of 10. Well done, sir. <laughs> And I'll so, wait till you get to meet Sean. Yeah, I know, I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and sort of, what do you do sort of when you're not kicking people's ass and smashing cars and <clears throat> being just bloody fast? Oh, you... To be honest, at the moment, not a great deal. I mean, I'm stuck in a weird period. I mean, I've just, like, finished study, but now I've got to find something to do with it. So, and, and now it's not really the greatest time to be looking for careers, but... I haven't timed it brilliantly, but I'll get through it. Yeah. Oh. Are you, you, you're studying, is that correct? Is that what you um, I, I was, but I've just recently finished, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? What were you studying? Um, I was studying commerce, accounting and finance, which oh. sounds dull, and sometimes it is, but it's okay. Well, we've got a lawyer and a finance guy. And welcome both. to the Sector One Financial Times. Both, both <laughs> coming from the little town of Invercargill, down the bottom of the South Island there. Invercargill? I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you're aware. Yeah, no, um, but that's where he's from. I found out a couple right? of minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm not there now. I'm not there now, but that's rough. You went out big now. time in my stock, mate. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just officially became a legend. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet is he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, Wardo, Wardo is our is our admin lawyer. Um, even though Kiwi law has nothing to do with Australian law, <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I imagine Wardo every morning, like waking up in a house like the house the Hobbit lived in. In that, in that part of the world, you know, and he might he might have a case to do once every six months because there's just no crime down there, you know. And somebody stole a pack of chips from the milk bar, and all of a sudden he's got work. <laughs> um, what the hell's a milk bar? Uh, yeah, okay, you, you guys don't have milk bar, but that, that's what I imagine Wardo's life to be like down there. Nice and easy, nice and relaxed. Um, in what is really one of the. Uh, one of the nicest places on earth down that uh, southern island down there. You're a lucky man, Wardo. Do you want to know uh, my commute time? Uh, two minutes? Uh, no, no, six. <laughs> six, six minutes. <laughs> oh, shit. You had to get that one in. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. All of six yeah. minutes. No, I, <laughs> I can. Yeah, I can, I can vouch for that. Having spent most of my life there, it's like five minutes. I can get anywhere. It's great. That is good. <laughs> And it's flat, no no hills. Oh, That's the difference oh. right there between Australia and New Zealand. So five minutes is down the road for them, forty five minutes is down the road for us in Australia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, today was our first official full time mask Sunday here in Victoria. Yep, I'm over where already. I live, and I'm glad to have taken it off. To be honest, fucking oh. annoying thing. Oops. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no. It is a New um, Zealand. It's all right. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, buddy. It's annoying wearing the mask all day, let me tell you. Um, glad to have it You have it to wear it at work all day, is it? Yeah, yeah. No, we have to wear it as soon as you walk out your front door now. Yep. Or you get a bike. Yep. Whatever. 200, 200 bucks, I think oh, it is. Oh, wow. $200 fine. 
if you get caught outdoors without a mask on in Victoria. So, geez, that's uh, a deterrent to the half. That's just yeah. weird rules, man. Well, so, I mean, uh, mate, yeah. it's crazy times. But anyway, we uh, we diverge. Yeah. Let's we diverge. Let's not turn track. into the ABC insiders. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mr. Wardo, how long have you been sim racing for? Six years? <laughs> um, basically, uh, as soon as I joined um, S1. That's it. Mm. Oh, yeah. What, what okay. were you doing before that? I played, I played Gran Turismo on like, PS2 and 3 mm. um, on controller, and I was so rubbish. And then, uh, but I always enjoyed it. And then when this came along, I was like, oh, okay. So I bought a wheel. <laughs> Because I'm an idiot, and then just haven't gone back. It's been great. <laughs> so you've you've had an interesting time with us at Sector One, going from as we were saying earlier, the inaugural champion, and you you had Terry as your nemesis in the early days, um, which I'm sure at times was very frustrating, but also rewarding. You took a championship. What has it been like since that first season, watching more and more of these guys coming through? To your credit, you're still sitting in that top group, though. Um, but uh, yeah, what, challenging, I'm assuming. I, I mean, I don't see myself as as fast as guys like like that, like Terry. But, I mean, you know, that first season he wasn't there for a few rounds, so I'm realistic about where I sit. Mm-hmm. And and Brocky came in, and there's about oh, two seasons where um, I basically just followed him around, <laughs> and that was yeah. good fun. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, but these guys that have come in now, and some of the other guys, they actually genuinely. Um, you know, World Tour sort of fast, some of them. Bloody um, DB and VLX are really, really, really quick operators. So, I and mean, you, sh- you know, I, I'm not as... I just enjoy trying to keep up, basically. Yep. Uh, yeah. Is there a drive to get quicker? To try to narrow that gap, or is it something that's just impossible to do? I mean, this is from your perspective. You, you, you're you a guy that's genuinely quick. The rest of us were still learning to play the game when you were already pretty fast so we're all trying to get faster trying to get faster trying to get faster but have you reached your limit well if lucas is listening no no i haven't i've got a long way to go <laughs> 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 um but yeah i mean you know i'd have to i don't have the time to really yeah you know like i i, I don't have any time i've got two little kids got a dog got a job you know full time i just play when i can once or twice a week which I think some of these guys, especially because I remember what uni days were like, you know, you could put in six to eight hour days mm, mm. in a game. Yeah. Well, I can't do that. No. Just eight hour months. <laughs> no. So it's just it's just time, so I, I'm realistic, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, I've got to have some talent too, so some of these other guys are pretty talented. And it, I think, you yeah, sort of the attitude that you've shown is the right one. You know, in that you're still managing to find enjoyment where you're at, racing those around you. Um, yeah, who, uh, sure. yeah, there's still a lot of fun to be had in that. Not everybody can be up the front. Otherwise, it'd be a one-man race, wouldn't it? Um, I mean, I wouldn't do it if I um, was so competitive that I would just quit if I didn't win every race. Uh, I'm yeah. Just... You know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> look that, um, that, and not for that reason, but it does remind me. I do have a shout out to our um, one of our CP boys who unfortunately had to pull out this uh, this past week. Uh, D D Vorganga. Um, Jace has been a uh, S1 boy since the very very early days, and. Um, due to personal reasons he had to pull out and fully understandable he's got the full support of the CP boys and I'm sure the greater S1 community as well um, understand that these things happen and sometimes we need to um, take care of real world things before we, we, we spend too much time on this pretend racing stuff but yeah just a shout out to, to, to Jace uh, we're thinking of him and um, he has said he's going to keep packing his head around the joint so we'll be... Um, will be uh, still in touch with, with Jace. And also, well. he's the still the number two overtake I have ever seen. Yes, that's right. Had around some the, classic moments. Yep. As, and the uh, outside of Hawthorns uh, at Brands yeah. Hatch in the Hyundai. I'll never forget it. Yeah. Um, you, you embodied the, the motto down at CP, which is that we never quit. And this wasn't a matter of quitting. This was... Uh, 
Oh my right. god. I That's love the CP talk. Mate, you'll join yeah. us one day. Yeah. Don't worry. Come on. One day, that brown paper bag's going to be big enough. <laughs> we spent the whole speech about how good, <laughs> good a guy Dee was, but it turned into CP this, CP that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dee is CP, mate. What can I do? <laughs> yeah, so, now yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sad for, to see D go, but I, I understand why, so... And we had a couple of others, I think, that may have stepped down during the week, Sean. Yeah, I was going to cover them off, but I probably forgot a couple of them. But we'll cover it off again since you are back now. Uh, Just Mm. a little tidbit there from the good doc. A motto at CP is just buy it. (laughs) 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 Very good call. So we did lose uh, Betty during the week as well. Um, um, so Betty has stepped away from racing, uh, so it is a big loss. Uh, Betty was one of the early guys as well, one of the OGs. Um, so he has stepped oh, away for personal reasons as well. Uh, we did lose a couple others, but I'm just trying to remember. And I'm sorry if I've forgotten you guys. I've just been so swamped with other stuff at the moment. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, as always, I. What we do, um, that's what makes tonight's race after the micro sector very interesting. We have four full time spots up for grabs. Um, so oh, yes. the pressure's on. Uh, it's it's going to be intense or intense uh, for our, to translate <laughs> oh, for our Kiwi Jesus. viewers. <laughs> <laughs> we have got the. Um, we've got the, uh, the dozen blokes in the CP recruiting team intently watching uh, tonight's race. Um, but yeah, we've, we've, we've got close eyes on tonight's race. There's a few teams looking to pick up new drivers, and CP is one of them. So. No, Claude, hey, intently. Yeah, fishy, 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 fishy. fishy. <laughs> um, no, no brown bags yet. you got to prove yourself before you get brown bags. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, so looking forward to tonight's race. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Barry, hasn't he left? Has Barry left? I don't think Barry's left. I don't think so. Not that I know. I think that was a double R type instead of a double T. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, cool. yeah. did, did Lan- Lanwell leave? Was that the other name? Lanwell, that's right. That's correct. So w- one part of the Smash Brothers uh, oh, did leave. Okay. And also Dan the Man. That's right. Dan the Man, yeah. Yep. He's, so, still, he's still around in the community, though, He Dan. is. He's still hanging yep. around in the community, so it's great yep. to see. Um, as I said, it is the revolving door. Uh, I tried to slide my way back into a seat, but... That got vetoed pretty quickly. <laughs> um, classic me, John Farnham, just call me. Uh, <laughs> do you know who John Farnham is, Scooter and Water? Good question. Oh, some eek. Um, some can't eek. Say the names, can't say the names familiar. Wow. Just wow. No, just I'm wow. old enough to know, John. <laughs> We'll Probably play the singer. You're the voice for you later yeah, on. You're the voice, or a bit of chain reaction, or a bit of yeah, uh, Age down, of Reason. Yeah. yeah. Sadie, well, the cleaning lady. Yeah. Here's a Classics. question for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. Did he have a typical Aussie mullet? Yes, he did. <laughs> and we, no, so we, he's eighties. He's eighties, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Eighties. Yeah. 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 Okay. AFL. AFL. Um, uh, and here in Sunbury, we prefer the term mullet. Not mullet. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm from the hills, mate. You know that's coming back, actually, the mullet? It's um, coming back in vogue. Yeah. I've seen a lot more mullets running I've around. I've seen the so. old mullet, yeah. The rich and famous are adopting it, and that's where it starts. Yep. So um, I might be able to get away with growing one. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> so are you rocking an ISO beard there, Claude? You got a nice I am. You are. I am. Yeah, I've right. gone full beard. Yeah. What about you, Water? Um, Do you even grow a beard, Water? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the other side of thirty, matey. Um, <laughs> so, do, oh, do, yeah. can you grow a beard? <laughs> uh, I can, but it does get that wee gin, ginger look when it gets a bit longer. <laughs> are you a ginger so ninja? I, oh, yeah. I, I tend to, um, but I, I, you know, I've got to be reasonably presentable at, um, on a daily basis. What about you, Scooter? You rock a bit of the facial determined? Um, no. 
because I'm only capable of growing the most disgusting Nick Beard you've ever seen, so I've to be clean. <laughs> bit, bit patchy, isn't it? Bit, bit of hair here and there. It's just awful, so I'd get rid of it entirely. <laughs> oh, I've got the rang of beard. I've got black hair, but my beard's ranger for some reason. Um, bit yeah, of I don't know where that happened. Yeah. It's so. quite common. Hmm. Uh, righty. All right, well, we might... Uh, We'll do a bit of a slow wrap up, I reckon. Uh, Are we doing see. our top five or what? Let's get into our top five. So, this week's top five was um, oh, filthy God, listen to it. Water has easily been the best guest ever on the show. Blacklight represent. Oh. Wow, you've changed. Blacklight for life, brother. Yeah. How quickly is he turn coded? Wow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, yeah, he's a bit of a slut, old Benny. No, <laughs> he's, a great, he's a great man. Don't you be talking about him. <laughs> he knows what I was to be slut. Um, anyway, yeah. So the top five we had. You sorry, you were saying? Yeah. So the top five is the top five sporting moments. Now these are our individual favourite sporting moments. Um. Bloody tough. I don't know about you three, but I found this really tough mm, yeah. um, and emotional. But we'll save that for when I do mine because I've got a little presentation as well because, you know, I like to step it up. So what we might do is we might underarm the new ball to water. Oh, you just did it. Couldn't help yourself. I wasn't really sure um, on the definition of sporting moment. But, um, we'll Could you come with... up with five? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I promise you, I promise you, no Australian wins anything in this one. <laughs> oh, Davy Warner didn't make it. Wow, oh, what a shame. <laughs> well, I could get... <laughs> anyway, I won't get it. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, well, the, probably the greatest sporting achievement in New Zealand's history would be uh, Sir Ed climbing the mountain. Oh, yes. That's okay. a bit of a Very well done. field moment, but... Is one. Uh, who, who was always, that, sorry? Who was that climbing the mountain? Stephen Hurry. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Gotcha. Who's that? What? What's going no, on no, here? sorry. I, I missed the name. I missed the name. I missed the yeah. name. Yep. I shouldn't have used the nickname because I assumed you knew it. <sighs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 sorry, Edmund. Yes, yes. Oh, here's a good one. Um, New Zealand won the Rugby League World Cup in Aussie, I think, in 2008 or 9. Remember that? Yes. That was quite enjoyable. I loved that. <laughs> um, and I was pretty young here, but New Zealand won a test series in Australia in 1985. So Richard Hadley dominating, having the better yeah. old Dino back in the day. Yeah, that's probably our greatest cricketing achievement, I reckon, one of them anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, all whites, they beat Bahrain to qualify for the World Cup in 2009. That was a huge that moment. Was football, that was one of probably the biggest, or one of the biggest fo- footballing things in New Zealand's history. And my last one is a Kiwi winning your supercars back-to-back. <laughs> <laughs> in a car that's way OP, but anyway, we won't get into that. Oh, my God, I don't care. Driving and whatever, you know. At the, risk of, at the risk of spoiling Scooter's top five, mm-hmm. just notice, Sean, that these Kiwi boys list victories over Australia, Yeah, where our ones are probably more over the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a, there's a scale <laughs> to all this sort of thing. Um, but that's good that they measure themselves to their neighbours. That's, that's, that's good. That's right. Uh, that's Scooter? <laughs> no, no, that's right. <laughs> Scooter's top five. Hmm. Well, in no particular order, and to be honest, one of these was going to be Goddy Matt back to back, but you know, mm-hmm. mentioned just really make that a yep. really great sporting moment that really needs to remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, some other ones I could think of recently that I've quite fond of, obviously a bit more modern, but um, I think Grand Elias six in the 2015 World Cup semi final to get oh, yes. to, to beat South Africa to get to the final. And it's just it's right up there. It's pretty good. Second greatest one day game one. ever. That was yep. amazing. Oh, I suppose um, the greatest one was Australia versus South Africa. Yeah, the drop. <laughs> <laughs> drop the World um, Cup. <laughs> uh, 
another moment I was quite fond of would have to be um, last year's World Cup with um, Martin Gapple's run out of in Estonia in the semi final. Just oh like, yes, it, the, the New Zealand smack out of India because I just couldn't believe it actually happened. I was oh that night was big. It was unbelievable. It was. That was definitely memory. Yeah. Um, this one a bit. Not to nothing to do with New Zealand, but another recent sporting moment I'd be quite fond of because I follow the NBA quite a bit. Would probably be last year's um, Eastern Conference Sinners with uh, Kyle Leonard's Game Seven buzzer beater to defeat the Sixers and get the Raptors seed to the Eastern Conference Finals because it's, it's pretty big. Bit of a basketball yeah. fan. Yes. Um, yep. I am actually. So I'm pretty. The league's coming back soon. That's pretty good. I was going to say, the preseason started today, didn't it? I believe in the NBA. It, it did actually. Mm-hmm. What big summer scrimmages? It's pretty good. I mean, a bit, bit of dusty play, but it's all good to be back regardless. Who's your pick to take it and, out? Um, oh, I mean, you can't get past the Lakers to be honest. Even though, I mean, that's the obvious choice, but it's obvious for a reason. King James. But, but I'm not really sure. I don't have any really predictions from the teams. I just want to see good games. So. I'm sure there will be some. Hmm. And um, probably to round it off and relate it back to like the cars and stuff, probably um, Chaz Mostert's Bathurst victory taking the lead on the final lap. That was, oh. that was just from Fox. All about an hour ago. One of our absolute personal favourites here in the box. So I do love quoting Fuel Save Maximum 100 all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, that concludes. Th- thanks, Gur. That concludes Michael Sigter. Um, we're going to leave it there. Gold. Mate, I, um, I got a sneak peek at Sean's top five, so I had to try and steer mm. away as much as I could from, from Sean's top mm. five. But these are, as we said, personal influences. I'm a little bit older than you fellas, and I thought I'd go back in time a bit. The Australia 2 victory in 1983, the America's Cup, oh, where yes. Australia 2 took the America's Cup. It was a significant moment in Australian sport. It was one of those times in my lifetime, anyway, that I remember finally realising that little old Australia could compete with the rest of the world in in sport and come out on top. And, of course, with a bit of a twist, the winged keel that was sitting underneath Australia 2 was a, a little Aussie cheat that we shoved in there and got away with. And, <laughs> and, and it was a uh, awesome moment. And, it, you know, names involved, Ben Lexton, the designer, Alan Bond, the late Alan Bond, of course, a personality here in Australia who was involved as the owner. Um, and, of course, yeah, Bob Hawke's famous line. Rob Hawke, yeah. yeah. But, uh, any boss or whatever it was that didn't give his employer a day off as a bum. Yep. But it brought in uh, Down Under, Men at Work, made that mm-hmm. totally popular. And the Bocking Kangaroo flag became cemented after that victory um, by Australia too. So a significant moment. Another one I can remember as a kid was Duncan Armstrong. I don't know if you yep. remember Duncan 88. Armstrong. A, 88 and so on. Yep, 200, 400 metre swimmer. And he uh, did the Aussie cheat too. His mm-hmm. winged keel was just sitting next to the lane rope and surf met beyond his wave and save a bit of energy that way and finished over the top of the Yank and the German and ended up taking the gold in the 200 freestyle, um, which was a, a big one for me personally. I've, I grew up playing tennis and um, and Pat Cash was my tennis and sporting hero. He's not the most luckable bloke at times, um, but neither was the bloke that he beat in the 87 Wimbledon final, uh, Ivan Lendl. Ivan Lendl, most people will remember, was a bit of a uh, trendsetter. He took fitness to a new level in tennis. And the one thing Cashy had over him was that he hated his guts. <laughs> and, he took, and he took great pleasure in being the bloke who stopped him of ever winning, from ever winning Wimbledon. And that was his biggest opportunity. Beating Cash was his real opportunity to, to win a Wimbledon title. And Cashy took him in straight sets. They do say the hardest thing in sport is to make Ivan Lendl smile. Oh, he was, he was a terrible fella, apparently. Not a very likeable guy. Um, and that win in Wimbledon in 87 was actually predeceased by a Davis Cup victory in 86 where Cashy two sets the love down versus Michael Pernfors. Uh, at Kuyong turned that around with the crowd behind his back. Just a memorable Davis Cup encounter, and that's where sort of Cashy hit the big time and obviously the 87 final at Wimbledon as well. Last two are a bit generic. Cathy Freeman, Sydney. Um, how somebody was able to perform under that pressure the way Cathy did uh, was amazing. Most down-to-earth person. I had a chance to speak to her once at a night. 
and she's just a down to earth person um, and a great representative of her people, Aboriginal people. And it was an amazing time that 2000 Olympics. Oh. And uh, to do what she did, the way she did it was was amazing. And the soccer, the boys, when they beat the Uruguayans, finally to sort of uh, break the drought. I know you've got the Uruguayans there, mate, and the I soccer do. ones. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. let you run through that one. <laughs> Great top five, though. Fantastic top five. And you didn't want to throw in 99 Carlton beating Essendon in the preliminary final? I thought, uh, thought no, that would have got a mention. 95 grand final, mm. I thought about, but that's, yeah, that's, that's just AFL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my top five. Now, I said this was incredibly tough. Um, I put a list in admin chat of the ones that missed out, um, and it was about eight of them. So this was incredibly tough. Uh, number six, I do want to give a quick shout out to number six. Um, he's the man that is known as Eddie the Eel um, from the 2000 Olympics. One of the most pure sport moments I've ever witnessed live. Um, just, I was up in Sydney at the time, best two weeks of my life. And yeah, it's just a really great moment. And to me, that's what the Olympics was all about. But here is Ghost Top 5 Sporting Moments. There you go. I've made a little thing as well because, you know, that's what I do. Um, so number number five, it is number four there, but it is number five, was Anna Mears in the 2012 Olympics. Now, backstory to this one is Anna Mears had quite a serious accident before this. Um, there was talk that she would never ride again. Um, she got over it. She sucked it up and she did the great Aussie thing and got out on the track. And she made it to the final against her arch rival, Victoria Pendleton, from the UK. And she walloped her. Absolutely walloped her. And as Aussies, we love nothing more than beating the Brits. Um, and it's just, it's just a great story of determination and she will never give up. Um, and she was also a flag bearer as well uh, for the 2016 Games as well. She's just a really great Aussie. And um, a fantastic Olympian and an Olympic gold medalist. Number four, it is the greatest one-day game of all time. <laughs> it's the 1999 Cricket World Cup semi-final, Australia versus South Africa. The day Lance Klusner absolutely bottles it. Um, and also Herschel Gibbs dropped the catch that the World Cup. Cup. Uh, now, Steve Waugh to this day denies he said that. Now, I reckon um, that's crap. <laughs> I reckon Steve Waugh's telling a few porky pies there. Shane Warne bowled one of the greatest one-day spells I've ever seen. Um, absolutely ripped through the South African mi- middle order. And it did come down to the last ball. And if you do oh, yourself a favour... Oh, absolute mayhem. But do yourself a favour. Go look at it on YouTube because it is one of the craziest last overs I think I've ever seen in... Cricket. Is that the one with Alan Donald? Um, yeah, uh, Donald about... his mob. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that one. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he just I mean... took off and knocked oh, God. Yeah. And of course, we funny. we went on to make the final. And we went on to beat Pakistan quite convincingly. Number three, it's probably the emotional, most emotional motor race I've ever seen. Uh, was Craig Lowndes' 2006 Bathurst victory? Of course, about two or three weeks before, we lost the great Peter Brock, and the Lowndes, of course, was the disciple of Peter's. And as you could see, visibly, he was so emotional even before the race, especially when he drove around in Brockies Tirana. Um, and there was talk that he wouldn't even make the grid. There was talk that Win Cup was going to start. But Craig started, and he was very well supported by Jamie Win Cup. And this is the race I feel that ja- this is where Jamie Win Cup became Jamie Win Cup. Um, but definitely. I think the biggest thing, though, is just the emotion after he crossed the line. He just visibly, you could tell, absolutely took it out of him. And just a great motor race and a great day in Australian sport, definitely. Number two, what a moment this is. The (laughs) 2000 men's 4x100 relay. This, to me, is the epitome of Australia at their best. Um, Before the race, quick setup, before the race, the American Gary Hall Jr. come out and said, we're going to smash the Australians like guitars. Wow. Which in a sense is a bit of a what comment? Yeah. Like what? Uh, you know, now, strange, but he was a strange character. He was a very strange character. <laughs> Michael Klim led them out and proceeded to go smash the world record in the first record. league. Ashley Callis and, oh, I've forgotten one. I should know this. Ooh, Fiddler. Chris Fardler. Chris, Chris no. Chris Chris yeah. 
anchored the beautiful second and third legs fantastically. And then come the last leg. The young Wiz kid, the superstar that was Ian Thorpe, jumped in the pool with Gary Hall. Now, Gary got a good start. Um, he was a fast starter as they made the turn. Then Thorpey got those big size 18 feet going and absolutely stormed home. Smash the turn, smash that last lap, smash Gary Hall. As everyone knows, I'm a big commentator fan. To me, this is the best bit of sports commentary ever. Dennis Cometti called this absolutely to perfection. I can still remedy my ears. Thorpe Hall, Thorpe Hall, <laughs> Thorpe Hall. He had that, and he had that waver in the voice, you know. Yeah. The, the emotion even got to him at the time. It did. Uh, um, mm. Yeah. Do yourselves a favour if you if you haven't seen this. Seriously, I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, go look it up on YouTube. It is one of the greatest bits of sport ever in Australian history. And number one, it has to be. It is the greatest moment in Australian sports history, bar none. It is the 2005 Australia versus Uruguay World Cup qualifier. 32 long, long years of pain, <laughs> heartache. Um, Iran, 94, I was at that game. I refused to talk about it. Um, then we went to Uruguay in 2002. We got off to a great start in the first leg, got smashed over there. Then we played Uruguay again, fake you know. And they made it very difficult for us when we went over there as well. We, they, the players were spat at. There was oh, all sorts but of But they abuse. were prepared for it. They were prepared. They were coming, yep. I always accredit this win to the late, great Johnny Warren. Mm. Um, he always said that we will do it. We will do it. And he passed, unfortunately, just before this happened. Um, but who could forget Bresciano in the 29th minute, just after Harry Kuehl came on. Harry Kuehl played a beautiful three ball to Bresciano, who slotted in the corner. Then we, there. And, of course, classic Socceroos. Can't do it the easy way. Oh, no. They made us wait the whole extra time and then to penalties and then stepped up one, John Aloisi, who slotted it in and he proceeded to run around like a complete lunatic, um, threw his shirt off. But I think the greatest moment in that wasn't John Aloisi's goal, it was Mark Schwarzer. Those two saves were just epic. Mm. And yeah, just, yeah, it is the greatest moment ever in Australian sport, hands down. It is. Hmm. Good top five. Excellent top five. Wake up, Kiwi boys. It's over. (laughs) The pain is over. Um, But, yeah, top five. That's a bring back memories, particularly that uh, there's the swimming one. Uh, Unfortunately, Michael didn't take out the individual hundred that uh, no, the Olympics after having smashed that world record. And a certain bloke named Alexander Popov was around. Popov, yeah, mm. Mr. Slimo, um, fast mo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Took it out. Um, but yeah, lots of memories. Definitely hey, great memories. I actually thought it was New Zealand versus Australia sporting moment. I didn't realise it was. Yeah, um, all time until quite recently. <laughs> we tricked you for that reason so I could fit in that oh, line. Oh, number one Australian New Zealand sporting <laughs> moment. That's easy. No doubt. Trevor Chapel, <laughs> hands down. Oh, Trevor Chapel. <laughs> well, you, you don't want to celebrate that. You know why? Because you can hear the salt in the Kiwi's voice. They're still not over it after all these years. <laughs> 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 I mean, it wasn't impressive. Yeah, you've never been us in that kind of thing, right? It hurts them. It does hurt them. Look, I think Australian. I think the great thing about Australian New Zealand sport is. We remember the victories, sort of like when the Wallabies beat the All Blacks once every 10 years. We yeah. remember those. We're like, oh, finally, we're beating them. Um, where, you know, the, the New Zealand cricket side, when they beat Australia on the off occasion, oh, they sorry. remember that. You know, it's... Well, you remember the series 85. Mm. So he's got a point there. So I think. Yeah, I mean, is this what talked about the series of just. <laughs> oh, the series just gone. That was a great series. What are you talking about? Oh, that was some of the most painful. <laughs> Doesn't help yeah. when we have the best bowler in the world. Well, we'll concede in your horses. You got great fucking race horses. Oops, there we go again. Yep. Um, <laughs> in great fish and water, you got great fish and you'll always have me over there. Yeah. Can't great fish and. They do produce some very good um, 
race car drivers as well. But we better move on because apparently the boys want to race, so we have sort of dragged on a little bit. <laughs> but I knew that was going to happen tonight, but it's all good. So, yep, so we'll have a five minute break uh, and then we will uh, fire into um, the Auto One Community Series. But first of all, a big thank you does go to Water and Scooter for joining us tonight. Um, was a lot of fun chatting to uh, our Kiwi brothers. Uh, so, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Maria. No worries. Yeah, Thanks, people. boys. And thank you to Claude. Thanks, mate. Sorry for the technical difficulties early. No, that's okay. Um, These things we'll happen. Be better prepared next <laughs> night. But other than that, guys, this has been the micro sector. As I said, we'll have a quick five minute break and then we will hook into the Auto One Community Series. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy. Stick around and we'll see you in five minutes.